It's you in English on Anichenko. Hello. And our guest is already online, Evgenia Kravchuk, member of Parliament of Ukraine. Hello, Evgenia, and welcome. Greetings from Kiev. Russian war and world support of Ukraine now. How can you describe and what can you say about, by the way, negotiations between Ukrainian President Zelensky, Turkish Erdogan and United Nations Secretary General Guterres in Lviv? Well, first of all, um, let's be frank. I mean, it's been six months and uh, we've gone so far uh, from three. We give you three days uh, to evacuate from Kiev and uh, to hold on to uh, half a year when the head of United Nations uh, is coming for the, the, uh, the secretary general is coming for the second time uh, in, in, in this period uh, to Ukraine and President Erdogan for the first time. And we had a lot of, um, you know, high ranking uh, guests coming in this period. Uh, so that um, means that Ukrainian resilience uh, is um, really serious and uh, is uh, supported by, um, I would say, normal and civilized part uh, of the world, not just, um, you know, Europe, but uh, also other countries that are um, far away um, from Ukraine, they support us. Um, I will say that uh, there were a lot of over-exaggerations uh, about uh, that Erdogan is bringing some news from uh, Putin saying, uh, you know, that Ukraine um, should uh, agree to the ceasefire and, and things like that. But we see the firm position of President Zelensky that um, any, you know, ceasefires and negotiations could uh, start when Russians leave our country. And that's the first and foremost step that needs to be taken. Russians should leave uh, the territories that they occupied uh, because they are not welcomed here and, all, you know, the rest of the world understands what's happening. Um uh, speaking about President Zelensky, he said that it's very that it was very important for Ukraine that uh, countries join the sanctions policy of the European Union, the United States, Canada, and others, so that the countries of Latin America also don't trade with the terrorist state. Mm, how do you think? What are the main results of Ukrainian diplomats' work of your work also? Well, first of all, uh, we have firm uh, position of, um, you know, your European Union, of uh, United States of America, of other countries that are supporting Ukraine, and uh, it uh, can be seen in different dimensions. Uh, not only military support, and military support, of course, uh, is what we need urgently, because uh, we need hard uh, weapons, heavy weapons, artillery, MLRS systems. Uh, we see that HIMARS uh, has been a game changer, actually, uh, on the battlefield, and we can observe that uh, with you know official statements of Minister of Defense and um, and our army um, uh, about how uh, it is resultful of targeting of precisely targeting military uh, objects on the occupied territories. That means that Russians uh, are running out of supplies or they have to bring these supplies from other territories, and that um, that is really you know seriously uh, slowing them down. Because look, since the uh, July 6, um, even the official uh, um, uh, propaganda and of officials uh, from Russia has not stated anything about capturing new territories. That means that uh, these heavy uh, weapons uh, that we received, thanks to diplomatic work of, of course, uh, first and foremost president, but also members of parliament that uh, had negotiations with our counterparts in other countries. Um, also, we need financial aid and we have been getting uh, getting it uh, only from United States uh, Ukraine uh, has received and will receive till the end of September eight billion dollars that's uh, you know a, a huge money um, regarding this gap in, in in our budget that we we have now because we spent much more on the army I would say ten times more on the army 
uh, than we did before the full-scale uh, invasion. And of course, the numerous packages of sanctions that were already imposed. Uh, in these months, uh, the whole ban on coal uh, from Russia uh, has started. Um, and also we see even the uh, official statements from a Russian central bank are very pessimistic. Uh, uh, they already said that uh, in three years, uh, Russian economy will decline up to uh, 20 percent, uh, if not more, because they're, they're just official statements and, and they, um, you know, try to hide usually the, the sad truth. Uh, but of course, we have, um, you know, other steps to be done. Uh, and it's not only about uh, negotiations with European Union, uh, because also uh, in, in these six months, uh, we have achieved the candidate status um, uh, for Ukraine to enter European Union. That's, I would say, huge achievement. Um, and, you know, again, um, coming back to, to the theory that uh, Ukraine will be taken in, I don't know, three days, two weeks at most, uh, now we are official, we have official status of candidate. And uh, um, by the end of the year, we really hope to start negotiations uh, about our plan of entering European Union. Uh, but there are some parts of the world, uh, such as Africa, such as South America, that need to be uh, targeted by our diplomats and uh, also by members of parliament. Uh, because Russia has used propaganda on these territories. Uh, they, you know, have a lot of... Uh, um, advocates and, you know, advocates uh, uh, that they are paying uh, in these countries uh, to hold a uh, pro-Russian position. Uh, so we need uh, to, to target those countries as well. And uh, uh, there is um, uh, in plans big tour to Africa. Uh, together with our Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, we're forming also delegation of uh, members of parliament uh, to, to speak to our counterparts. And President Zelensky uh, is the first uh, president of Ukraine that had uh, conversation, official conversations or meetings with uh, um, some of the leaders of uh, South uh, America and Africa. That happened first time for the first time in 30 years, soon 31 uh, year of independence uh, will celebrate. Mm -hmm. uh, two questions. Next steps, uh, Ukrainian steps in the international sphere. And what about countries uh, that don't support Ukraine? How can we explain them the, the consequences of the Russian war? Well, uh, of course, uh, one of the biggest goals for our diplomacy and, and Ukraine as a country is uh, to receive or not to receive, but to, to give Russia the official um, status of a country that is a sponsor, uh, sponsoring terrorism. Of course, it's it's difficult decision, but we've already seen uh, very strong political signals from American Congress to uh, Department of State uh, about this. Um, and now I know that uh, it's being discussed um, in terms of. Uh, um, I would say, you know, the details and how these details can influence different spheres. But we are on this very um, long and very important road. Um, also, uh, we need to push forward uh, for total ban uh, for Russian oil and gas, uh, because we see that uh, already a lot of countries um, had refused uh, to buy not only coal, but uh, gas, or at least they have a plan how to uh, change, you know, to change for other countries uh, that uh, will export them uh, gas and, and, and oil. Or to think about some uh, price caps, uh, because we cannot, um, you know, uh, have the situation that uh, Russia, because of the gas prices, is uh, getting the same amount of money. So there are, you know, different ways to solve this, either to have uh, a ban or either to have a price cap. So, um, you know, Russian oil will not be sold on um, markets uh, no higher than, you know, some price uh, that could be um, set up of, um, you know, by those countries who are buying it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Losses of the Russian army now in the full-scale war against Ukraine reached, I don't know, maybe uh, more than 44,000 uh, soldiers. It means that Russia kills uh, their own people and they try to blame Ukraine, USA in the global hunger and to scare Europe with the cold winter. What should we do with this question? 
Well, uh, about killing their people, it's, uh, you know, it's a choice. Uh, and uh, when we're speaking about, uh, you know, what Russians can do in the meantime, uh, and, um, you know, usually what, what answers uh, we hear, uh, that, you know, we can't go um, to, I don't know, to protest because um, all of the people will be packed to the police department and, you know, put to sentence. Uh, but, you know, I always answer, I mean, we are the country that had two had had hold two revolutions when there will be a million of people on the uh, red square uh, they will not have the amount of cells and amount of um, uh, you know uh, military people to to to, uh, to put them to jail uh, so it's just amount of uh, of the people who are ready to protest um, and uh, that's why, actually, we are discussing with our partners about uh, visa ban, uh, because it will also put pressure into the society inside of the Russia. Uh, I understand that probably those people uh, that, uh, you know, can afford uh, a tourist trip to Europe, um, you know, are not uh, those who are sending their sons uh, and husbands uh, to die in Ukraine, because usually the, the, these are, uh, you know, they're coming from poor families, uh, from the territories uh, that are in depression. Uh, but still, you can't say that, uh, I mean, there are some parts of, uh, of the country that uh, is um, just living in another world, uh, not saying anything about the world. Um, uh, and uh, um, just uh, look at uh, Germany after the Second World War, uh, what helped, helped them and, uh, you know, how they evolved into truly democratic nation. They said we were wrong. All Germans said we were wrong. We didn't stop Hitler. We didn't stop, uh, you know, all the atrocities that uh, Nazi did. Uh, and that's what Russia needs to, to do and Russian people need to do. Um, it's um, it's the only way um, to, uh, you know, to, to, to stop this circle of dictators that uh, are coming into power. Mm. Um, President Zelensky uh, said that we can and we should think only about how to win, to win on the battlefield, uh, on the uh, political front, in the information confrontation, in the economic plane, everywhere. Which front you think is the most important now? Well, um, of course, all the fronts, uh, they play important part, but uh, the biggest pressure is on, on our army and on, on those uh, men and women uh, that are on the front line. So uh, if I would put it in, in some sort of gradation, uh, then of course the um, um, you know the, the the money that we spent from the budget, uh, it's you know more than half uh, goes to to the army, not only to the army but also to uh, all of the uh, defense um, um, uh, sector. It's also national guard and uh, the border police and police. Um, so uh, of course it, it is important because uh, if. You know, our army loses on the battlefield. Our diplomats and we, as members of parliament, have um, you know our positions for negotiations, or not just to negotiations or some talks uh, um, about even receiving help. Um, you know, we have uh, worse uh, positions um, because, of course, you know, all the countries they want to help those who are strong, not just uh, um, weak that, you know, and th this uh, um, help will uh, not be resultful. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, informational front is very important because um, for Russia, uh, actually putting this war and making this war, it's very, very expensive. And that's why they're using their agents inside of the Europe, inside of the other countries, and also they're using their propaganda and uh, also their informational campaigns uh, in, uh, for example, Ukrainian segment of Telegram to um, um, sort of, you know, um, influence our minds. Uh, so we won't, uh, for example, believe in our army or we will not believe in our political leadership. That's what they, what they want. Uh, because if we are together, if we believe in our victory, then it, be, uh, it means that they will be losing. Um, um, because the spirit of uh, Ukrainians is what, uh, you know, they are uh, afraid of. 
One more question left. In Ukraine, more than 1,000 children were affected by Russian war. Uh, how do you think what kind of uh, punishment should be for the people who kill children? And what about investigation of war crimes of uh, uh, Russian Federation? Well, right now, the last numbers from uh, Attorney General office is 28,000 of war crimes that already are uh, investigating. And uh, that's what, you know, we have papers on them. Uh, but of course, um, uh, those uh, atrocities that happened in Mariupol or that are happening in Kherson region or in Zaporizhia region uh, the, on the territories that are occupied, we can't, uh, you know, do that because we don't have um, the access of the these territories. And this number, so, you know, more than a thousand of kids that were affected, it's not, uh, I think it's much more because it doesn't uh, involve uh, anything, you know, any numbers from Mariupol, for example. And uh, we can imagine that uh, it could be, you know, that the losses among the civilians in Mariupol was, um, as, you know, local um, um, representatives say, could be up to 20,000 of uh, civilians that uh, were killed. That's huge numbers. So we believe that uh, the best way to prosecute uh, these atrocities and these war crimes would to establish uh, international tribunal. And uh, uh, we are working together with special representative from Minister of Foreign Affairs, Anton Karanevich, um, on, you know, these uh, three steps that need to be taken uh, before we, you know, we, we do that. Uh, we already put um, uh, the, man, um, uh, the, the sentence about international uh, tribunal in resolutions of uh, Parliamentary Assembly of Council of Europe, also of the Par uh, Parliamentary Assembly of OCE. Uh, and that's, you know, the base, um, you know, we'll just build a legal base. Uh, and then uh, we need to find uh, the countries. There could be, you know, different variants. I don't really believe uh, in, uh, you know, something like United Nations, because Russia will, uh, will block that. Uh, but we can uh, find uh, countries that are ready to establish this uh, international tribunal. And uh, that's the same thing that happened in Nuremberg uh, when Nazis were put to trial.